Verse 19. So, so they too went until they came to Bethlehem. And it came to pass, when they were come to Bethlehem, that all the city was moved about them. And they said, Is this Naomi? And she said unto them, Call me not Naomi, call me Mara, for the Almighty hath dealt very bitterly with me. Now they were surprised to see Naomi come back, but they were happy to see her. And she told them, she said, Don't call me Naomi anymore, because Naomi, the word Naomi means pleasant, the name. She said, Call me Mara, which means bitter. Now we have to notice that she wasn't bitter toward the Lord. It's not saying she was bitter toward the Lord like we get. When the Lord has to spank us sometimes, chastise us for whatever we've done when we're out of His will, He spanks us. And a lot of times we don't like it and we start complaining. And sometimes we get bitter toward the Lord. Well, Naomi didn't get, she wasn't bitter here. Verse 21. I went out full, and the Lord hath brought me home again empty. Why then call ye me Naomi, seeing the Lord has testified against me, and the Almighty hath afflicted me? She left with her husband and sons. <laughs> Naomi saying she was full, meaning she was having everything was going her way. A lot of times that's how we are when when everything is going good for us. We're like we don't look toward the Lord. She's like the only time we look toward the Lord, pray to the Lord, is when we're in trouble. She left out full, meaning her husband and her, and her. She had her her two sons. Her her life wasn't empty until she lost her husband and sons, and they were taken home for their disobedience. As we've seen up above, she's not testifying against the Lord. She's saying she was. She's saying it was her and her husband's fault for what they did. If she was full of blessings, if that's what that meant, then that means that she was walking with the Lord. Plus, the Lord is not going to take any way or anything away from you when you're walking in His will. So these weren't, she was full of blessings. She was just full because she had every, everything she needed. Naomi, suffering was a sign of God's disapproval. That happens to us when when we're not walking in His will. If the if Naomi was doing nothing but complaining about the Lord and what He's done to her, like she hadn't done anything wrong, do you think she would have been able to win Ruth to the Lord? You know, Christians, it's kind of hard to lead someone to the Lord when you're always complaining about them. But Naomi was able to lead Ruth to the Lord. Verse twenty-two. So Naomi returned, and Ruth the Moabitess, her daughter-in-law, with her, which returned out of the country of Moab, and they came to Bethlehem in the beginning of the barley harvest. Now the beginning of the barley harvest, that's going to get us uh, ready for the next chapter. This is what season it was. Now that Naomi has repented and came back to the Lord, she's empty. What are the Lord's, what is the Lord's plan to fix this because she's repentant she's back with the Lord and when she gets back with the Lord a lot of times the Lord has to fix what we messed up so let's see God and his plan on how he fixes this in chapter 2 and Naomi had a kinsman of her husband's a mighty man of wealth of the family of Elimelech and his name was Boaz Boaz meaning powerful one He's kin and he's wealthy. So you can kind of see where we're going. He's got two qualities of being a redeemer. He's a, he's a, he's a kin and he's able because he's wealthy. Verse 2. And Ruth the Moabite said unto Naomi, Let me now go to the field and glean ears of corn after him whose sight I shall find grace. And she said unto her, Go, my daughter. Now gleaning means you go into a field, you're... You're, uh, you're like poor people, and you picked up you pick up whatever crops left from when the uh, workmen would go harvest the field, and uh, they would always not purposely, but what whatever they didn't pick up was left for the gleaners, and the Lord this was the Lord's command, in Leviticus 19 verse 9 and 10. I'm gonna read this out of the Living Bible. When you harvest the crops of your land. Do not harvest the grain along the edges of your fields, 
and do not pick up what the harvesters drop. It is the same with your grape crops. Do not strip every last bunch of grapes from the vines and do not pick up the grapes that fall to the ground. Leave them for the poor and the foreigners living among you. I am the Lord your God. So this is the way the Lord said to do things. He's always had his ways to take care of whoever. Right here the Lord is speaking to Moses and tells him what to say to the children of Israel. How to take care of them. The ones who don't have as much. Remember, it's a man who should be out there gleaning. Because remember what I told you earlier in the lesson. How when the Lord gave his punishment out to the devil, to Eve and to Adam. He told, he told Adam he would till the ground. Work for a living. And also right here in Genesis 3.19 it says, And the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground, for out of it was thou taken, for the dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. So Adam came from the dust, from the ground. Eve came from men. Okay, so we know he's talking about Adam here. And he says, you're going to work for a living. He said, you're going to sweat and work to eat. It says, in the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat. So he, if he wants to eat, he's going to have to work. There's a, The Bible does say, uh, if a man doesn't work, he doesn't eat. Now he's addressing the men here. Now sometimes the women have to do it. Sometimes they have to go out and work. We're going to find out here why sometimes the women have to. Also, maybe it's because the husband can't work. You know, we have husbands who get hurt on the job or just get hurt and they're unable to work. That always has a, the Lord always has a way to take care of his people. And we're going to see this in this teaching. Verse 3, And she went and came and gleaned in the field after the weepers. And her hap was to light on a part of the field belonging unto Boaz, who was of a kindred of Elenamanek. Ruth went because Naomi was too old to go. Remember what it said in chapter 1, verse 12? She was too old to have a husband? Well, she's too old to go out and glean, so, so Ruth went. And it says that she just so happened to come to a field that belongs to a kinsman of Naomi. Now, we as Christians, we know we don't, we don't believe in coincidence. We're going to see the Lord led her to this field. The, when you're walking with the Lord... He will lead you. He will. He gives us the footsteps to walk in. So it's not a, it just so happened. It's not a coincidence. Sometimes we don't see that until the end of whatever God's doing for us, whatever his work is in us. We don't see it until the end. Verse 4. And behold, Boaz, Boaz came from Bethlehem and said unto the weepers, The Lord be with you. And they answered him, The Lord bless thee. Right here, Boaz was a good Christian man and the boss. Wouldn't it be nice if you, when you went to work, that the, your boss would come up to you and say, God bless you, and not because you sneezed, sneezed, but just to say, the Lord be with you. Instead of, a lot of times all you hear from them is GD. In other, in other ways, they say things. Verse 5. Then said Boaz unto his servants that was set over the weepers, Whose damsel is this? Now damsel means she's a single young woman. And Boaz is asking, Who does she belong to? This is showing that every single woman belongs to a man, either her father, her husband, or brother, some male kin she will belong to. And that's what Women weren't meant to be independent. Nowadays, you don't say, well, who does she belong to? Because she might be a single woman, just independent single woman. Well, back then, they didn't say this. He knew she was under a man, and that's why, she, that's why he said, whose damsel is this? We're also going to see that Ruth caught the eye of Boaz right here. I mean, you have these gleaners out there, and he catches her. Verse 6, And the servant that was set over the weepers answered and said, It is the motivatish damsel that came back with Naomi out of the country of Moab and she said I pray you let me glean and gather after the weepers among the sheaves so she came and hath continued even from the morning until now 
that she tarry a little in the house. Now, when he said she was a motobotish, that's really what he wasn't. That That's kind of a not so nice way of saying who she is. Because remember, she's from a country that have other gods. They're dark people. And his expression that she was a motobotish was not a saying it the nice way if you understand what I'm saying and he said that she came back with Naomi uh, the foreman overfield knew all of this because Ruth had to tell him who she was so she could glean there she just couldn't assume that she was able to glean in that field but was that, But she was very, very careful to ask and get permission and the foreman told Boaz how hard she had been working how she rested just for a little while under some shelter. Then in verse 8, Then said Boaz unto Ruth, Harvest thou not, my daughter, go not to glean in another field, neither go from hence, but abide here fast by my maidens. Remember how I told you at the beginning of the lesson that Ruth is like us, the Christian, and Boaz is a type of God? Well, we'll see as soon as Boaz fell in love with Ruth, he started to take care of her. Just like the Lord. The Lord sent his son. The Lord loves us. If he didn't love us, he wouldn't have sent his son to die on the cross for us. So just like Boaz fell in love with Ruth, Ruth that's the way the Lord loves us. Boaz is telling Ruth not to go to any other field, but to stay right here with the other women. Just like the Lord. He tells us, you don't need to go to any other gods. I'll take care of you. Boaz knew she was much younger than him because he calls her daughter instead of sister. Verse 9 Let thy eyes be on the field that they do weep and go there after them. Have I not charged the young men that they shall not touch thee? And when thou art athirst, go unto the vessels and drink of that which the young men have drawn. He tells the young guys, he said, don't mess with this girl. He's telling them right off the bat. He's given her special protection. And she had no right to the water because she was a gleaner. The water was for the for the workers. But she was telling her, giving her permission, she could drink of the water also. And I'm sure the other gleaners were thinking, who is this young man? Why is she getting such special attention? Well, we're going to see that Boaz was falling head over heels for Ruth. Verse 10. Then she fell on her face and bowed herself to the ground. And said unto him, Why have I found grace in thy eyes, that thou shouldest take knowledge of me, seeing I'm a stranger? Now this is exactly what we should have done when we gave our life to the Lord. When we realized, when you gave your life to the Lord, it's because you realized who he was. The Son of God, how he came and died on the cross for our sins so we could get forgiveness, so we could be saved from hell. Because until you get saved... You're going to hell. So as soon as this happened to us, as soon as we realized God was giving us grace to have salvation, to escape hell, we should have done the same thing. We should have fell on our face and bowed ourselves to him. And we should always be doing that. Not just that one time, but we should always be bowing down to him and worshiping him. She falls down to the ground and worships. Now, you know, we can learn from Orient, the Oriental people because they're always bowing down either to their God or their, to their superiors. I mean, they, they, they're they always on their knees. You don't find too many Christians that way. Sorry to say. He knows how she has followed her mother-in-law and the Lord and did not return to her past life and, has, and how she's accepted this new way of life, just like we did. We repented. We turned away from the way we were, we were living and we've accepted this new life that we have now because we've become new creatures. That's what Corinthians chapter 5 says, that we've become new creatures. Verse 11. And Boaz answered and said unto her, It hath fully been shown me all that thou hast done unto thy mother-in-law since the death of thy husband, and how thou hast left thy father and thy mother in the land of thy nativity, and art come unto a people which thou knewest not heretofore. Boaz is saying, 
I know how you left everything, and how good you have been with Naomi, and how you've come to a new place to live that you know nothing about. He's, he, <clears throat> he sees this in Naomi. Verse 12, The Lord recompense thy work, and a full reward be given thee of the Lord God of Israel, under whose wing thou art come to trust. Boaz sees in how she has committed herself to the refuge and the protection of the Lord, to be under His wings. Amen? That's how we are when you're born again, when we belong to Him. We're under His wings and His protection. Verse 13, Then she said, Let me find favor in thy sight, my Lord, for thou hast comforted me, and for that thou hast spoken friendly unto thy handmaid, though I be not like unto one of thy handmaidens. She's saying, let me be accepted by you, for you have been very good to me. He sure has, and we know why. Ruth believes that she's still a Moabitess, and she doesn't realize who she is now. It's kind of like us when we get born again. We were used to one way of living, and now we have to get used to it. When the Lord says we're born again, that's what it is. We have a new way of walking, talking. Our life is totally different. We no longer Excuse me, we no longer, no longer live the way the TV tells us to live, to live the way our friends tell us to live. We live the way the Lord wants us to live. Verse 14, And Boaz said unto her, At mealtime come thou hither, and eat of the bread, and dip thy morsel in the vinegar. And she sat beside the weepers, and he reached her porched corn, and she did eat, and was sufficient, and left. Boaz, uh, Boaz has invited her to lunch and even waited on her until she was full. Now, Ruth is like what it says in Matthew fifteen twenty seven. Yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from the master's table. She was a gleaner. She got the crumbs. But now she's eating at the table before she was picking the leftovers. Now she's at the table and she's eating so much She's 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 had more than enough. Amen. That's the way the Lord is with us. Now, can you picture this? Here's a dark skinned, beautiful young woman, and she looks poor. Her hair is probably not fixed up. She's not very pretty as far as uh, being all dirty. Might even, even She might even be stinky. She doesn't have any makeup on. And here's this rich man. And he can't take his eyes off of her. Verse 15. And when she was risen up to glean, Boaz commanded his young men, saying, Let her glean even among the sheaves, and reproach her not. Verse 16. And let fall also some of the handfuls of purpose for her, and leave them, that she may glean them, and rebuke her not. So Boaz said, Let her pick up right, right up here with the workers. Now the gleaners had to be behind the workers. He's telling her she can pick up right, up right up with the workers she can pick up. And he says, make sure that you drop plenty for her. Not only what she needs, but more. And he tells them not to give her a hard time. Again, he's showing how he's fallen in love with this, with this woman, Ruth. Verse 17. So she gleaned in the field until evening, and beat out that she had gleaned. And it was about, it was about 50 pounds. And she took up and went into the city, and her mother-in-law saw what she had gleaned. And she brought forth and gave to her that she had re reserved that she was sufficient, meaning her lunch, her leftover lunch. And she brings the corn to Naomi, which was plenty. Isn't this just like the Lord? When you're walking with Him, doing what His, His will is, how He blesses us, Amen. Verse 19, And her mother-in-law said unto her, Where hast thou gleaned today? And where wast thou? Blessed be he that did take knowledge of thee. And she showed her mother-in-law with whom she had wrought, and said, The man's name of whom I wrought today is Boaz. Naomi couldn't believe how much she was able to pick and wanted to know who was so good to her. And she says, Blessed be the one who did this. Again, the Lord recognizes the one who works. 
people who work, the Lord blesses, especially, especially the men, like I've said before. But right here we're seeing where for a while, just for a while, a woman had to go to work. The Lord takes care of her spiritually, was taking care of her spiritually, and Boaz was taking care of her physically, giving her what she needed. The Lord was using Boaz to take care of Ruth and Naomi. And she told her it was Boaz. Ruth had told Naomi it was Boaz, where she had gleaned. Verse 20, And Naomi said unto her mother-in-law, Blessed be of the Lord, who hath not left off his kindness to the living and to the dead. And Naomi said unto her, The, more, the man is near of kin unto us, one of our next kinsmen. Naomi was delighted that the Lord led Ruth to the field of Boaz. She explained that he is one of our nearest kinsmen. So you can see where this is going. Uh, Boaz is definitely, definitely in the category of being able to be a redeemer. Verse 21, And Ruth the Moabite said, He said unto me also, Thou shalt keep fast by my young men until they have ended all my harvest. Remember, this story is about a type of Jesus to us. He tells us to stay close to him and to, to his men. It's kind of like the Lord telling us, you know, stay close to God, stay close to the men of God, like preachers and teachers and Christians, until he comes for us. It's just, it's just the same thing the Lord's telling us. Stay with his people, the born-again Christians. Verse 22. And Naomi said unto Ruth, her, her daughter-in-law, It is good, my daughter, that thou go out with his maidens, that thou meet thee not in any other field. Naomi is telling Ruth to stay with the workers of Boaz and don't go to another field. To do so would show uh, Boaz that she wasn't getting enough, that his field wasn't good enough. Again, the Lord tells us to stay away from, from people from other fields, other religions, other doctrines of uh, another gospel, because those are dangerous fields to be in. That's why he says if someone comes to your door with another gospel, he says not to even let them in. That's in the word. Elimelech went to another field, and look what happened to him. He led his family away from the Lord to another place, and look what happened to him. If he would have trusted in God and took the spanking that he was given Israel, all of Israel, not just him, but all of Israel was being spanked by the Lord. The Lord would have taken care of him just like he did with Boaz. Boaz was in this same chastisement that the Lord was given. But look at him now. He's a rich farmer and has plenty. So after the Lord spanks us, he still takes care of us. You know, spanking is just for a moment. Verse 23. So she kept fast by the maidens of Boaz to clean on to the end of the barley harvest and of the wheat harvest, and dwelt with her mother-in-law. Now this chapter shows it's a great love story. He takes care of her for a season, and that's good, but they need more than that. You know, this is just for a season here. But, you know, when you're a widow, you need to be taken, the Lord takes care of you more than just for a season. We don't want to be, he's not like the churches we have today where when widows come for help, they'll help them one time, maybe twice, but that's it. That's not, that's not the Lord's way. Chapter 3. Then Naomi, her mother-in-law, said unto her, My daughter, shall I not seek rest for thee, that it may be well with thee? Believe it or not, but there are some that teach that there are errors in the Bible, and this is one of them. Just because Naomi's talking and she says, My daughter, you have men who say, Well, this is an error in the Bible. You have men that are, I mean, the devil's always trying down, uh, is always trying to put down the Word of God. Our Christians. If, I mean, if they would just read what the verse said, it says, Naomi, her mother in law, said unto her. Right here, he's, it's calling her mother in law. Now, even today, we have. Mother-in-laws who are close to her daughter-in-laws, and and they call them daughters. Anyway, I just wanted to point that out because there are men out there who who are trying to put down the word of God. Okay, it's the same way uh, when it says that Jesus was the son of David. Well, we know Jesus wasn't the son of David, 
but he was the great, 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 I don't know how many greats, great grandson of David. But the Bible says the word, the scriptures say Jesus was the son of David. It's just things like that we got to watch out for. People are evil. Naomi says that she needs to find rest for Ruth. And what does that mean? Well, back in chapter 1, verse 9, it says, The Lord grant you that ye may find rest, each of you in the house of her husband. So Naomi's saying right here that she's going to have to find rest, which means she needs to find uh, Ruth a husband. Back then, sometimes, marriages was arranged by the parents. And it's fitting that Naomi should start looking for a husband who can provide security for Ruth. That's what she's doing. She's looking for a husband that can provide security for Ruth. Verse 2. And now is not Boaz of our kindred, whose maiden thou wast? Behold, he with barley tonight in the threshing floor. She points out Boaz as a kindred, that he is kin. And she's thinking about what it says in Deuteronomy 25, verse 5 and 6. It says, If a brother dies without a son to carry on his name, then the brother or next of kin should carry on this responsibility and give her a son. And the first son she has will be considered the son of the dead brother. So his name won't be forgotten. This was very important back in Israel. The name was very important. But this is God's way. He's, he's saying this is what happens. It was a tradition for the owner of the field to stay that night of the harvest. It was kind of like a celebration. And verse 3, Wash thyself therefore, and, not, not, and anoint thee, and put thy raiment upon thee, and get thee down to the floor. Now this is Naomi talking to Ruth, telling her how to, how to get ready for this. Make not, make not thyself known unto the man until he shall have done eating and drinking. Now, what do women do when they want to impress a man? They get all prettied up. Because I'm sure she was dirty and, like I said, even stinky from working out in the field. And she tells, Naomi tells Ruth, but don't let him see you until he finish with supper. Verse 4. And it shall be when he lieth down that thou shalt mark the place where he shall lie. And thou shalt go in, and uncover his feet, and lay thee down, and he will tell thee what thou shalt do. So she's saying, now after he's done with supper, watch and see where he's laying down. So when you go in later that night, you'll know you're lying next to Boaz. Now this was a custom they did. And the reason she uncovered his feet, because eventually it would wake him up, and he would notice her, and then he would take, he would take it from there, she said. Verse 5, And she said unto her, All that thou saith unto me, I will do. Now this is what you call submission. Remember at the very beginning of the teaching, we talked about wives submitting to her husband. This is what you call submission. Submission. She submitted. She, she didn't ask any questions to Naomi. She just did as Naomi said. And that was it. She said, Okay, I'll do it. Verse 6, and she went down onto the floor and did according to all that her mother-in-law bade her. And when Boaz had eaten and drunk and his heart was merry, he went to lie down at the end of the heap of corn. And she came softly and uncovered his feet and laid her down. And it came to pass at midnight that the man was afraid and turned himself, and behold, a woman laid at his feet. She uncovered his feet like Naomi said, so he would wake up. He wakes up about midnight, and he's surprised to see that there's a woman at his feet. Verse 9, And he said, Who art thou? And she answered, I am Ruth, thy handmaid. Spread therefore thy skirt over thy handmaid, for thou art a near kinsman. Now she answers, and she says, I'm that servant, Ruth. That's who I am. Naomi has taught Ruth many things, and this is one of them. This is from Ezekiel 16.8. When she said, Spread thou forth thy skirt over thy handmaid, she was speaking symbolically of marriage. Because in Ezekiel 16, verse 8, this is the Lord speaking to Israel. It says, Now when I pass by thee and look upon thee, behold, thy time was time of love. I spread my skirt over thee and covered thy nakedness. Yea, I swear unto thee and entered into a covenant with thee, saith the Lord God, and thou becamest mine. <clears throat> 
And like I said, this is this was God being married to Israel, but this is what they would this is what they would say: spread thy for thy skirt over thy handmaid. And this is what it meant: marriage. Verse ten, and he said, "Blessed be thou of the Lord, my daughter, for thou hast showed more kindness in the latter end than at the beginning, and as much as thou followest not young men, whether poor or rich." Now, the first kindness he's speaking about is taking care of her mother-in-law, Naomi. And she's shown her kindness by going to him instead of the younger guys. Now, remember, Ruth is much younger. And she could have easily have gone to her younger guy instead of, of Boaz. And he knows he's much older than her. But he also knows that he's family. He does know this. He knows the ways of the Lord. He also knows that Naomi has been teaching her the ways of the Lord because of what she's done. Verse 11, And now, my daughter, fear not. I will do to thee all that thou requirest, for all the city of my people doeth know that thou art a virtuous woman. Boaz knows what to do now. He's speaking about being a redeemer. He knows, and the people in town know, that she is a virtuous woman. Proverbs 12:4, A virtuous wife is her husband's joy and crown. A virtuous wife. A virtuous wife is someone who submits to their to their head. And right now, Naomi is the head of Ruth. Right now. But it says in, in uh, Proverbs 12, 4, A virtuous wife is her husband's joy and crown. Now, if you're not this virtuous woman, the Lord says, the rest of the verse, The other kind corrodes his strength and tears him down. Everything he does. So if you're not a virtuous woman, he's saying if you're not this, then what you're doing is you're you're tearing down your husband. So women, Christian women, you want God to see you as a virtuous woman, submit to your husband. She's not married yet, but they're calling her a virtuous woman because of the way she's taking care of Naomi, like I said. <clears throat> Excuse me. Verse 12. Now it is true that I am thy near kinsman, howbeit there is a kinsman nearer than I. And he is saying, yes, I'm a kinsman, but there's one that's closer than me. He has the first choice. Verse 13. Tarry this night, and it shall be in the morning, that if he will perform unto thee the part of a kinsman, well, let him do the kinsman part. But if he will do not do the part of a kinsman to thee, then I will do the part of the kinsman to thee. As the Lord lieth, lie down until the morning. Now he's telling her, go ahead, stay the night, and in the morning I will see the next near kinsman and see if he'll do right. If he doesn't, then I will. This is what he's telling her. And when he says, as the Lord liveth, he's kind of saying it like we say today. I swear to God, this is what I'm going to do. Which we shouldn't swear to God, but I'm just showing you, as the Lord liveth, that, that that's what he's saying. Verse 14. She laid at his feet until the morning, and she rose up before one could know another. And he said, Let it not be known that a woman came into the floor. He doesn't stay. He doesn't say they slept together. It doesn't say they slept together. She laid at his feet. Remember, these are two Christians. Now, right away, you know, people right away want to start thinking bad things that they slept together. That's what the rumor will be. And that's why he told her to leave first thing in the morning before anybody could see her. Even though they're Christian, you know, the devil, like I said, he likes to, he loves to start rumors. And another reason he wanted her to leave early was he didn't want anyone to know that she bypassed the first kinsman, which she hadn't. She just didn't know there was one nearer than him. Now, there's three reasons why Boaz didn't approach her first on being a redeemer. Legally, he couldn't, because like I said, there's one closer than he is. Second, he's much older. You know, he's a he's about 100 years old, and she's about 20. So he's much older than her, and I'm sure he, my wife is, is, is younger than me, 11 years younger. And when we first met, uh, I was scared to ask her out because I, so, I was older than her. Well, that's the way men are, and that's probably why Boaz right here, he, he didn't make the first move because, you know, men don't like to be let down. Now, Naomi is near akin than Ruth. So the same problem. Boaz is second, just like Ruth here is second, because Naomi is the first kin. 
But now what Naomi is doing is she is waving her claim on, on, on Boaz and allowing Ruth to take her place. Now verse 15, Also he said, Bring the veil that thou hast spoken thee, and hold it. And when she had held it, he measured six measures of barley and laid it on her, and she went into the city. Now he's still, he's still taking care of her. He sends her home with food, even though he's not the Redeemer yet, but he's still taking care of her. Verse 16. And when she came unto her mother-in-law, she said, Who art thou, my daughter? And she told her all that the man had done to her. It's not that Naomi didn't recognize Ruth, because she says, Who art thou, my daughter? So she knew this was Ruth coming, which it was probably still dark. It was early morning. But she wasn't saying it because she didn't know who Ruth was. She was saying, what she was really saying was, okay, Ruth, are you Mrs. Boaz or not? How did things work out? This is what Naomi was wanting to know, anxious to know. Verse 17, and she said, These six measures of barley gave he me, for he said to me, Go not empty unto thy mother-in-law. Verse 18, then said she, Sit still, my daughter, until thou know how the matter will fall. For the man will not be in rest until he have finished the thing this day. So she's done with, okay, now we have to wait patiently at home and see what happens. And Naomi is telling her, don't worry, because he will do everything he can legally to get you as a wife. Mm 